Hi, I'm Casey. Welcome to a special Thanksgiving edition of the Systems Kitchen. Today we're going to be preparing Cornish hens with cornbread stuffing. Thanksgiving is upon us and there's nothing I love more than a traditional Thanksgiving meal. Today, we're going to deviate slightly from the turkey dinner and instead make delicious Cornish game hens with a delectable cornbread stuffing. Let's take a moment to use a context diagram to make sure we've thought through our meal prep before we begin. To prepare our meal, we're going to need our Cornish hens, our stuffing ingredients, and all the ingredients necessary for any sides we may serve with our meal. With the help of our enablers, our time-tested family recipes, our oven, utensils, and other tools, we're going to transform those inputs into a delicious meal to share with our friends and family. We have to remember there's going to be at least a little bit of cleanup after we're done. Of course, we have to also consider the controls. The number of guests we invite will impact the number of ingredients we need. We also have to make sure our kitchen is clean and that we know how to best to use our space. Now that we have a plan, let's begin cooking the main course for our Thanksgiving meal. The first thing we're going to do as we, we begin making our Cornish in is to prepare the stuffing. And for the stuffing, we're going to need a few ingredients. We're going to need some chopped celery. We're going to need some chopped onion. I love to use fresh herbs. I've got some rosemary. I've got a couple of leaves of fresh sage and a few sprigs of thyme. In addition, I have right about three cups, yeah, three, three and a half cups of dried cornbread that I did in fact make the other day. It's important to make that cornbread ahead of time, especially as cornbread gets a little soft and crumbly. So we want it to have a, a little bit more more structure to it when we put it into the stuffing. And so to do that, I've let it dry for a few days and I did in fact dry it in the oven to give it just a little bit of a, a toastiness. It adds a lot of flavor when we toast it just a little bit. So we'll now begin to chop our onions and celery and we'll mince and dice our herbs to include in our mixture. So we're gonna start with the celery. I'm gonna use, based on our, our cooking knife selection, tool selection video the other day. I'm going to use my Santoku for this, especially for the celery. I find it uh, just allows me to get in and, and get things done much more quickly. So remember to use proper, proper technique. And we're going to work our way down the celery stock. Next, we're going to cut up our onion. So to cut the onion, I always cut that stem piece off of it and then we're going to peel a couple of layers off of our onion. Now to avoid the tears, remember we're going to cut it in half and we're going to make nice even slices to dice this onion nice and small and then we're going to go through it horizontally being sure to hold on to it like that. And then again, using good knife technique, keeping your fingers out of the way, we're gonna make nice, even dices of our onion. And as we get to the bottom, we can start to cut here and we don't want any waste at all. So we will leave nothing but that root end. We'll transfer this to our pan. And we'll cut up the, the second half of that onion. And next we'll cut up a little bit of thyme. So I'm going to strip some of the leaves off of the, uh, the fresh thyme. We're going to take a few sprigs of rosemary. And then we're going to take a couple of leaves of sage. Now to cut up herbs, especially the long leafy ones, I like to roll them just a little bit. We can roll them together like this. Cut very, very fine, fine, fine slices. I do actually like to use a nice rocking motion to cut up and, and really chop and dice these herbs. So I'm going to pull out my chef's knife and simply use the rocker blade to really mince these, these herbs together. We want a really nice very, very, very fine chop on all of these. Okay, let's put the celery and the onions on the stove. We're gonna put these on at about medium-high heat 
uh, yeah, medium heat. We don't want to burn the butter. We want to melt it and give it enough heat to, uh, to, to saute nicely so that there's still enough liquid to put into the, the stuffing. We're going to get our egg ready. We like to put a couple of eggs in to help bind the stuffing together and to add a little bit of uh, a little richness and flavor. Now some people like to crack eggs on the side of the bowl. Some people like to crack them on a flat surface. Either way. Now I like to, to break the yolk up first before I start and then I use not just an up and down motion but a side to side motion to make sure that we're breaking up all of those those proteins, albumin, things like that. All right, our onions and celery are done sauteing. So we're gonna turn off the heat. I'm going to pour the stuffing, the cornbread itself, into the bowl. Now, we're going to add those beautifully sauteed onions and celery to the bowl, making sure to scrape all of that delicious brown butter out. We don't wanna waste anything. Butter makes it better. And as that's in the bowl, we can now gently start to mix that around. We want to get that distributed nicely and evenly before we add too much more liquid. So our stuffing is ready. We have our Cornish ends that have been rinsed and dried. I have uh, pre-covered a pan with some aluminum foil. I like to do that if I'm not going to necessarily have enough juices to make gravy from a couple of Cornish hens, so I like to make cleanup a little bit easier. I can rinse that off, recycle it, and we're good to go. I have a little bit of broth to throw in the bottom. I have some twine to tie up the Cornish hen, and I have a few spices that we're going to add to the top of the Cornish hen along with a little bit of butter as we prepare them. Now, I like to keep the hen suspended just a little bit off the bottom like we have a roasting rack. In some cases, you might not have a roasting rack. Maybe you don't have um, or it's too big for the Cornish hen. So we have celery for that. So I'm gonna measure the pan, the baking pan that I have here, and then I'm simply going to cut the celery in half like that, and lay that on the bottom to keep our Cornish hen suspended so they cook nicely and evenly all the way around. Let's, let's dress our Cornish hens. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take one of my little hens and get it ready to stuff. So the first thing we'll do for presentation is take those, those little wings and tuck them back behind the Cornish hen so it's nice and relaxed as it goes in to bake in the oven. Now we're gonna take a spoon and we're going to fill this little hen with as much stuffing as we can get in there. Just like that, cornbread stuffing is delicious, especially with the homemade cornbread we've got today. So we've got the Cornish hen stuffed, and we're going to tie up the legs so that it bakes nicely, and the presentation is also very, very nice. Now, with my our hen resting on the celery, we're going to take a little bit of butter, and we're going to rub that butter over the top of our hen. Make sure we get it on the legs and the wings. We want to make sure that we've got enough butter that the, uh, the herbs stick and that it gets a nice delicious brown. I'll have to tie up those legs again in a second and make sure that everything we've got going into the oven looks delicious and smells delicious and is delicious. Okay, our hens are just about ready to go into the oven. What I wanna do now is put a few herbs and spices on the top. It's, we can use fresh herbs. I like to use the dried herbs. I like the color they give, and, and it's just a, a little extra accent. I do love a really good crispy skin on poultry. So we're gonna start with a little bit of roasted garlic. We're gonna follow that up with some, some onion, some toasted onion. We're gonna follow that with a little bit of white pepper. I like white pepper. To me, white pepper definitely evokes a few nostalgic memories, and it gives it a little more depth, I find, than a little bit than regular black pepper. We'll take just a sprinkling of dried sage, and I saved a little bit of that rosemary from before, and that's kind of my, my secret favorite ingredient. So we're going to splash a 
drop a little dash of rosemary over the top of these birds, and they are now ready to go into the oven. The oven is preheated at 425, and we're going to cook them for anywhere from 20 to 35 minutes until the internal temperature gets to 165, and the juices run clear. Now to keep things moist, you can add just a little bit of broth to the bottom of this pan. Gets a, a little bit of steam going and helps keep the juices the juices flowing. The last thing we're going to do before we put them in the oven is cover them. We don't want them, the skin to cook too quickly. We want to brown that at the end. Some, sometimes I'll turn the broiler on after I take this off to, to really toast that skin. Now on aluminum foil, remember there are two sides. We've got the shiny side and we have the matte side. The matte side is the coated side. So that's the side I'm going to put down. So we're going to build a very loose tent. Over our hens, we want to keep those juices in, we want to keep that steam inside, and we don't want to, to mess up the, the herbs and spices and butter that we've put on top. So we're going to keep that very loose, and now we're going to transfer those to the oven. Well, our Cornish hens are ready to come out of the oven. Let's take a look and see how we did. And as you can see, they are beautifully cooked. And what we'll do now is take one out of the pan and transfer it to our plate. And look at the beautiful color that we've got on our Cornish hens. The skin is very nice and crispy. The stuffing is cooked beautifully. And I cannot wait to plate this and serve it to our guests. So thank you for joining me on another episode of The Systems Kitchen. I hope you enjoy a wonderful meal like this with your friends and family this Thanksgiving. So from our, my kitchen to yours, happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you on the next episode.